Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Vidya, working as a consultant at Shankarai Hospital, Bangalore. I am here to brief about the ocular manifestations in Down syndrome. So, Down syndrome, it's a trisomy 21, is the most common chromosomal anomaly in children. It was first described by John Landon Down in 1866. The incidence is found to be 1 in 700 live births. So the physical characteristics of this Down syndrome children being the single palm mark crease, short fifth finger that curves inwards, white spots on the iris, which will be which we'll be seeing later, small ears, small mouth, uh, flattened nose and face, up slanting eyes, white short hands uh, with the short fingers, separated joints between the bones of the skull that is a craniocephaly, excess skin at the nape of the neck and hypotonia. There are various systemic features which can be in the form of uncognitive impairment. Nearly 75% which have been found to have the hearing loss, 70% with the chronic otitis media, congenital heart defects, gastrointestinal tract abnormalities, dementia and the Alzheimer's disease, thyroid disease. There is a high risk of type 1 diabetes mellitus, then transient myeloproliferative diseases, leukemia, Hirschsprung's disease. The ocular findings in children with Down syndrome ranges from about 46 to 100%. One study found that nearly 97% of the children with Down syndrome are with at least one ocular abnormalities. So how to approach a child with a Down syndrome? So when a child comes in, we have to measure the visual acuity using the appropriate vision charts, depending on the cognitive ability of the children. Then we have to do the dynamic retinoscopy to look in for the accommodation, anterior segment evaluation, IOP measurements as in when required. Then dilated retinoscopy here, we recommend the homotropin and the plain tea drops depending on the cardiovascular risk factors the child may be harboring. Then cycloplegic refraction, which will let us know about the hyperopia and the astigmatism seen in these children. Then the posterior segment examination. Then accordingly, we will formulate the treatment regime for these children. We will see one by one now. So the refractive errors. First, the vision recording need to be done according to the vision charts, uh, according to the, which, which is depending on the cognitive ability of the child. The significant refractive errors are seen in about 50 to 80 percent of the children, most common being the hyperopia followed by the myopia and the astigmatism. Infants with the Down children, Down syndrome generally have with the rule astigmatism. The refractive error here increases with the age in these children when compared to the normal control. A theory for this difference with the age is a failure of emetropization in children with the Down syndrome. The reason for this emetropization failure include the poor accommodation, decreased time spent during, uh, during the near work, increased amount of time outdoors, changes in the visual cortex as described by Watt et al. in their study. Nystagmus is seen in approximately 5 to 30 percentage of all the patients with the Down syndrome. It can be either horizontal jerky or a pendulum nystagmus. Often it is associated with a refractive error. The retinal maldevelopment may be the factor behind these nystagmus in the children with the Down syndrome. Accommodation is a main factor to be assessed in these children. The lack of accommodation is found in nearly about 55% of these individuals. Reduction in the accommodation amplitude is commonly found in them and these are usually associated with the hyperopia and strabismus. It is thought to be due to the failure in the neural control of the system. So examining the accommodation using a dynamic retinoscopy should be a standard assessment in patients with a Down syndrome. Bifocal and Down syndrome study demonstrated that in these patients, the accommodation, uh, the, uh, the bifocal glasses have resulted in improve, improved performance of some literacy skills. The near visual acuity improvement demonstrated by the bifocal was significantly greater than the near visual acuity improvement demonstrated by the single vision glasses. Therefore, the authors concluded stating that bifocals are recommended to optimize the education in these children if there is an hypoaccommodation which is demonstrated. 
Strabismus is common to occur in these children. The common type being the esotropia followed by the exotropia and the vertical deviation. The strabismus in Down syndrome is typically acquired rather than a congenital. Amblyopia prevalence being between 16.9% to 37%. The main causes being the strabismus followed by the mixed etiology followed by the anisometropia. The standard care for the amblyopia, uh, which are mainly the spectacles and the occlusion therapy, can be very challenging in these children. The eyelid abnormalities are common in children with the Down syndrome, the slanting palpable fissures, prominent epicanthal fold, epiblepharon, congenital ectropion are all are common. Blepharitis is commonly reported in these children in approximately about 30%. The increased rate of blepharitis may be due to the narrow and upward slanting palpable fissure, increased susceptibility to infection due to the immune system impairment. It requires aggressive treatment as the frequent rubbing which is done due to this can lead to the refractive errors and keratoconus in these children. So lid hygiene is a very important in these children, particularly if blepharitis is identified. The nasolacrimal obstruction is found in 17 to 36% of the patients with the Down syndrome. The presence of epiphora has been reported in about 15 to 30%. The congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction is typically due to the failure of the Hasner's membrane to open. So the causes of the CNLDO in these children may be due to the punctal agenesis, canalicular stenosis, canalicular atresia, accessory punctum, the tight nasolacrimal canal and the anteriorly placed inferior turbinate. And there is also a high rate of failure with a simple probing procedure. So more complex surgical intervention may be required in children with the Down syndrome. Keratoconus is commonly seen in these children. It is reported to have the prevalence in about five, one to 5% of the individual. It typically develops around the puberty. The contributing factors being the steeper posterior corneal curvature, which is found in these children when compared to the normal control, the higher order aberrations, which are more pronounced, and the eye rubbing due to the squamous blepharitis, which also adds on to development of this condition. So corneal topography plays an important role in early identification and planning for the further management with the keratoconus. Iris abnormalities, especially in the form of brush field spots, are found in about 13 to 77% of the individuals. The brush field spots are nothing but a benign white, gray or brown spots on the anterior surface of the iris. It is due to the accumulation of the iris stromal tissue and the connective tissue hyperplasia. The prevalence of cataracts in these children ranges from 5 to 50%. The common etiology being the zonula cataract, the nuclear, the cortical cataracts, cerulean cataracts, etc. The prevalence increases with the advancing age. The cataract surgery is considered safe and it has promised good visual outcome in these children. The IOL implantation is preferable in these cases as it's difficult to manage these children postoperatively with the contact lenses. So when considering the cataract surgery, the comorbidities like congenital heart disease must be taken into consideration before planning for the general anesthesia. About 28% has some type of a retinal abnormality. The higher incidence of foveal hypoplasia has been demonstrated in these patients. The increased retinal vessels crossing at the disc margin has been found in 13 to 38%. The myopic retinal degeneration, tigroid fundus, preretinal hemorrhages, and localized hyperplasia of the retinal pigment epithelium have been found in them. There is a higher incidence of regmatogenous RD, which may be due to the self-inflicted trauma in many of these children. Optic nerve head tends to be smaller in these children, and these children are more prone to get the optic nerve head drusen, as shown in this picture. The prevalence of optic nerve elevation is seen in about 3%. Optic disc pallor is supposed to occur in about 5% of these children. Glaucoma, though it is rare, it's seen in about 1% to 7% of the children with the Down syndrome. Coming to the cortex, the brain volume globally is found to be reduced when compared to the normal counterparts. 
there are fewer differentiated neurons in the prefrontal cortex, hippocampus, and the cerebellum. The higher visual pathways are poorly developed in these patients when compared to the normal controls. So as such, the visual acuity in patients with the Down syndrome is reduced. The reduction might be due to the significant refractive error, the strabismus and the associated amblyopia, nystagmus, hyperaccommodation, cataract, and then the failure of the higher visual pathways. So points to consider when treating the children with advanced syndrome being, first the evaluation for the strabismus, cataract, and the nystagmus should begin in the first six months of life. The annual checkup until the age of five years is important for evaluating the refractive error, strabismus, and other ocular findings. And if any of these are found, then it has to be treated appropriately. The dynamic retinoscopy plays an important role to evaluate for the accommodation in these children. And if there is an hypoaccommodation found, we have to treat it with the bifocals. Biannual evaluation is then recommended after the age of five years to evaluate for any further ocular manifestations. While treating the glaucoma, the medications with the cardiovascular and the respiratory side effects should be avoided. While treating amblyopia, atropin penalization is to be avoided as it can have the cardiovascular risk factors. The examination technique should take into account the cognitive ability of the child. Even adult patients may be able to perform better with the recognition acuity testing. If not possible, then teleracuity cards can may be utilized. Then the, uh, the patient should be followed up every three years from 13 years old to 21 years or older to monitor for the keratoconus, refractive error, and the cataracts and treat it appropriately. So I conclude by stating that the ocular manifestations are so varied in children with the Down syndrome. Early identification and appropriate therapies would Lead, would make them to have a better vision and the quality of life. So the knowledge of these ocular manifestations is very important in the clinicians who are dealing with the Down syndrome. So which will help in optimal managing of these patients. Thank you.